Now we've seen how the higher order functions work, specifically map, apply, and filter. And those functions can definitely help us write scheme code that's much more succinct. But I don't want you to think that there's anything particularly magical about them. So let's try to take some of that magic aura away from them by implementing them ourselves. Now keep in mind, map, apply, filter, their scheme functions. So in your coursework, if you come into a place where you need to use those, feel free to use them. But the nice thing about scheme is it's a simple enough language that if you need them and they're not available, you can always write them from scratch. So I have some scheme code here and I've defined two functions, increment and triple. We've seen those many times. You should have an understanding of, of how those are defined at this point. And then I've also defined some lists. Again, all of this should be review. So let's run this and see what happens. And you can see, we just get the original list. Our increment and triple we'll see later. Now I have three calls to map here, triple, increment, and then this lambda function, which maps a function that checks to see if X is greater than zero. And if it is, it returns X, otherwise it returns negative X. Perhaps you already noticed this is an absolute value function. So if I run this code, you can see that map returns what we would expect. And I'll put map here so that we can keep track of what we're doing. Now let's write our own version of map. So we're going to define map R for recursive. It's a function that's going to take two parameters, fun and list, and think about what map does. Well, if the list is null, then we're just going to return an empty list. Otherwise, now if you'll remember, map takes a function and applies it to every element in the list. So we're going to cons the result of applying function fun to the car of the list with a recursive call to the cutter of the list. So we'll call this with map and then we'll call this again with map R. So let's run this and you can see I get the same results with map and map R. Okay, so now let's try this with apply. And so we'll apply addition and multiplication to the two lists and we run this and for list one, that's the numbers from one to 10. And I recognize that as the sum of the numbers of one to 10 and the product of the numbers from one to 10. So I'm pretty confident that, th that those are correct. So now let's write our apply method. So remember apply is different from map. So what apply does is it takes every thing in the list and combines them with the function provided. So it doesn't apply it to each individual one, it applies it to each pair. So it's a slightly different structure, but we're still going to take a function and a list as a parameter. So there's several situations we need to handle. So first, what if we're given an empty list? Well, we can't apply something to an empty list. We also can't apply anything to a list that has just one thing in it. That wouldn't make sense because again, we're going to assume that the function that's passed into this is going to take two operands. So the first thing we're going to consider is what if the length of the list is equal to two? Well, if it is, then we're going to apply the function, not just to the car of the list, but also to the car of the coder of the list. So there's two elements in the list. We're going to apply that function to those operands. And actually, I think what I'm going to do, just to make this consistent, I think if the length is one, I think what we want to do is just return the car of the list. I think that's a better solution because I can see scenarios where that would be okay. In fact, actually, this being the case, I think we can get rid of this recursive case here because if there's one thing in the list, we'll return that thing. Otherwise, and let's do the recursive case and then you, maybe you'll see why we can delete this. So otherwise, and in this case, the length of the list has to be greater than one. And the reason I'm putting this in there, I don't want to handle the case where the list is empty. If that happens, I just want this to error out. So if the length of the list is greater than one, then we're going to apply the function to the car of the list and now the operand is going to be the result of applying recursively the function to the cutter of the list. Now notice here, if the length of the list is one, then it's going to return the car of the list. So if the length of the list is two and we hit this case, then it's going to apply the function to the car of the list with the car of the cutter of the list because the list has size one then. So I can actually remove this case, I believe. And as we're testing it, we'll find out very quickly if that works. So now let's try our test code with apply R. 
And when I run this, notice I get the same results as I did with just apply. And I'm going to very quickly update this to just say that we're implementing map and then testing map. And so that way I'm going to leave the original calls in as well. I think that's going to help things make more sense later. And so I'll add that code here and here. Okay, so our last example is going to be filter. And I, I think by now you should have an idea of what, what this is going to look like. So uh, before we start, let's just look at what our original higher order filter function would give us. And so you can see that filtering list one with even numbers just gives us the even numbers, positive numbers in list two. And then here we're filtering with a lambda for x is equal to 10. And so you can see that those all look like they're operating correctly. So now let's implement filter and we'll call it filter r. And it's going to take two parameters just like our others. And actually this is going to be conditions. And if the list is null, then we're going to return the empty list. If applying function to the car of the list returns true, then we're going to cons the car of the list with a filtered cutter of the list. And then otherwise, we're going to throw away the car because it didn't meet the requirements of whatever the filter was. And so we'll just return the filtered cutter of the list. So this is filter R. And if I run this, you can see I get the same results I got above. So again, just because those are higher order functions, we talked about them specially, you can still implement them from scratch. Again, you'll notice pretty much with define, lambda, cond, null, cons, car, and cutter, you can implement almost anything. And so it's something to keep in mind when it comes to working with scheme. So even though they seem really magical, they're really ultimately not something that you can't do on your own. You can write these from scratch if you need to. Again, you don't have to unless it specifies use a recursive method. If it doesn't specify that, you might as well use the higher order functions. But if it does specify you have to use a recursive method, here we go. And you'll notice these fit into the same patterns for scheme functions that we've seen multiple times before.